The Nigel Farage Show. Good morning, everybody. Well, Mike, I mean, who'd have believed it? Michael Gove, of all people, admitted taking cocaine several times about 20 years ago. Uh, and not only is it against the law, but of course, today it turns out that he wrote an article at around about that time, very, very critical of Class A drugs and the damage they do, not just in this country, but way down the line in South America and elsewhere. And that today seems to have turned into, in the sun on Sunday, almost a sort of full double-page spread of confessionals from politicians as to what they did when they were at university. Well, to talk me through it, I'm being joined by David Wooding, the political editor of The Sun on Sunday. Good morning, David. Good morning, Nigel. So spread over two whole pages, pictures of a variety of, including myself, variety of political figures and have they ever taken drugs. How important is this? Well, uh, this is a big debate, really, within the party at the moment. There are those who feel we are in the 21st century and say things such as, oh, come on, everybody's dabbled in drugs when they were at university. It's no big deal anymore. Um, and that might be the case in the view of a lot of, a, a lot of younger people, in fact, who may well have dabbled in drugs in some way or other. However, there's two things which are a problem for Michael Gove. Uh, the first is that the, um, the, the, the grassroots conservative members, the people who will decide who becomes the next leader of the party when it gets, goes to that head-to-head secret ballot of all the membership, hold tend to be an older people with more traditional values. And one wonders whether they may look down on this with a, a little bit more... Um, seriousness than many people are taking it this morning. The second thing is, as you rightly pointed out uh, a few moments ago, there's another story emerging about the the criticisms that the Conservative Party, the government, and in particular Michael Gove himself, have made at middle-class drug users mm. who think it's all mm. right for them to break the law in the comfort of their own home at their dinner parties by buying a few grams of cocaine. But down the line, the suppliers of young kids are involved in a knife crime epidemic, which the government is trying to solve. Um, and, and these are the people in the supply chain. So... Uh, He's open to uh, criticism um, or charges of hypocrisy as a result of, uh, of doing this. No, so he it's is. not quite as plain sailing as it sounds. No, I understand that. But I, I think what worries me, David, is are we going to spend the next 53 days, I think it is, until we get the new <laughs> Prime Minister, are we going to spend the next 53 days simply talking about who did what or said what 25 years ago, as opposed to a proper debate about what they're going to stand for, how they're going to cut the Gordian knot of Brexit? Is there not a danger this all becomes a bit of a distraction? Uh, yes, absolutely. Bang on there, Nigel, as ever. Um, and that is worrying the Michael Gove camp. I spoke to people yesterday um, who were saying their biggest worry, not the two issues I mentioned earlier, but their biggest worry is that for, for a few days, this will be the focus of the media attention and he will not be able to get his message across. Now, he's got a, a piece on the front page of the Sunday Telegraph today saying that he'll scrap VAT yeah. after Brexit. But most of the papers... <laughs> And yourself on your show are not following this up. We're all talking about his drug uh, use. So what that means is that the other candidates in the race are coming out with their eye-catching initiatives while everybody's focusing on Michael Gove and his past drug abuse. Um, And in fact, he might even have to keep his head down and avoid the press for, for a few days while this all blows over. So it does give the others a chance. And we've seen this morning in the, in the betting odds that um, from being second in the race behind the front runner Boris Johnson, he's now, the, the odds have lengthened. He's now eight to one. And Jeremy Hunt and Sajid Javid um, are breathing down his neck. Mm. In fact, um, uh, Jeremy Hunt seems to be uh, on, on, at the point of overtaking him into second place. And just remind everybody, David, please, how this is going to work. You know, when the MPs vote, how the knockout stage operates. Uh, well, well, there's the, a the threshold. There the, are the, the, what eleven or twelve candidates standing. There's the, probably some more may declare tomorrow if they can get enough votes. Um, they have to uh, in under the old system. They have two hustings a week before the MPs, and they decide uh, they, they vote uh, in a secret ballot all the MPs um, on who they want to be the leader, and the last one falls. If the bar a little higher, they have to get a certain number of votes in each round, and those who, who fail to make it will drop out. Of course, then they have another round of voting um, until they're left with, uh, until they whittle it down to uh, two. 
So um, I, I suspect that by Thursday of next week, we should be close to or, or at the point of having two, two final candidates. Now, the, it gets really interesting when we get down to the last three because the, the MPs will have to decide which of those final two go to the secret ballot of all members throughout the country. Um, and there is a feeling that if Boris Johnson, who's very popular with the, uh, the, the, the grassroots Tory members, if he gets on that final ballot, he'll walk it. That is the view. So that is a game uh, issue with Michael Gove. If some of his people feel that Michael Gove would win in that final ballot, they may stick their votes behind one of the other two who they think will be able to beat uh, Boris Johnson. And in your view, uh, and this is a very obviously dangerous game to predict, and I know that (laughs) the history says that since 1965, not a single favourite has won. Boris clearly is the favourite in the country, clearly is the favourite with the bookmakers. By my calculations, 55 Conservative MPs have come out openly and backed him. So tell me, David Wooding, your reputation on the line, who's going to win? Gosh, I didn't come on your show to have my (laughs) career ruined. Uh, But uh, again, well... (laughs) Ever since Brexit started three years ago, political editors galore have been making wrong calls on this. Yes, quite. Our job has got that much harder. Um, I still think um, the, the safe money would be on Boris. I mean, it, it, anything can happen in these in these places. Uh, but many a, a slip twixt cup and lip, and I, I suspect, uh, just like this um, cocaine revelation came out, there might be one or two other... Um, potholes along the road to uh, to number 10 for Boris Johnson. <laughs> OK, David, thank you very much indeed for joining us this Sunday morning. Well, that was David Wooding, political editor of The Sun on Sunday, and, you know, he says actually Gove does have a problem because, number one, the electorate tend to be a people of more advanced years. They don't live in the metropolitan bubble in London where cocaine, I have to say, it seems to be everywhere in London. I mean, just to the most extraordinary degree. But if you're living out in Worcestershire, perhaps at dinner parties there, it's not quite as popular as it is in Kensington. And that's a problem. And the second problem is that there's now an accusation of hypocrisy. But let's just try and broaden this out a little bit. Let me ask you, you know, should a politician's past affect their future and if you think look anybody involved with any illegal activity should be barred from reaching the top job tell me why you think that on 0345 606973 or maybe you think you know what we're all flawed we've all got things we've done in our life that we're not particularly proud of at least it shows they're human text to 84850 and tell me what would your red line be what would be the one thing that you think in someone's past should completely disbar them please tell me by using the hashtag farage and lbc at lbc and as ever uh, you know looking for questions comments on facebook too let's go to ellis in manchester good morning to you morning nigel how are you i am okay i'm worried though as i said a few moments ago ellis i'm worried that this choice of the next prime minister it's not just tory party leader is it the next prime minister i'm worried it's all going to be about what people said and did 20 30 years ago rather than what they're going to do in the next six 12 months so um, a couple of things so i'm a conservative member so i will get a vote uh-huh. on the next prime minister um i think to answer your question on what people did 20 years ago i think you've you've just made the point it was 20 years ago i think we should probably be looking past it and quite frankly, we need to be looking what someone's done in the last five years, what they've done in their political career. But actually, what I will be looking for is not what they've done in the last 20 years. I'll be looking at uh, trying to, uh, who is going to drag not just the Conservative Party together, but also the country together. I think if we look at the Peterborough by election, we saw quite a lot of Conservative members and also Labour members going to your party, which is absolutely fine. Um, however, the point is. For a Conservative Party, the last thing that we want, anyone in the Conservative Party wants, is Jeremy Corbyn in number 10. And if that's replicated across the country, that's the risk. So, to me, in answer to your question, 20 years ago, I'm not particularly bothered about mm. what I am bothered about is who's going to bring the country together. Well, of course, if um, I mean, the answer to that, Ellis, of course, is that uh, if the last thought, she's still there, of course, but if Theresa May had delivered a Brexit that was recognisable to voters, there never would have been a Brexit party, would there? No, I completely agree. And, and as a Conservative member, I won't tell you who I voted for, but I can tell you now it's probably one of the hardest decisions I've had to make in the European elections as to mm. who to vote for. Uh, and that, for a Conservative member, is quite worrying. 
Yeah, it is. And then, Ellis, just very quickly, can I ask you, um, the choice of the next Prime Minister is going to get made by 0.18% of the population. And you're one of them. You're one of the 120,000 Tory members. Do you think it's right that just a small group of you should decide the next PM? Nigel, that's our constitution. Uh, we vote for a party, not a person. Um, so, yeah, I think, um, I think that's absolutely fine. OK, fine. Ellis, thank you very much indeed for your call. D in Dulwich says, not bothered about his drug intake, but how will he visit the USA as Prime Minister? Well, D, this is a very, good, very, very good point, because, of course, to get an Esther or to go up from that to a visa to go to the USA if you've been convicted or you've admitted to Class A drug use, you can't go to America. I suspect, D, that if he did become Prime Minister, I, I think an exception of some kind uh, would be put in place. Meredith, there's a new caller from Bow in East London. Good morning, Meredith. Good morning, Nigel. Your biggest fan ever on the line here. Well, there you are. Thank you. They cheered up my Sunday no end. So, I mean, <sighs> Meredith, what in someone's past should bar them from moving on to the top job? Unless they've actually committed a sexual offence, an extremely violent offence, or they've, you know, done something horrendous. You know, it shouldn't matter. Not one little thing should be able to define a person for the rest of their life. Everyone makes mistakes. That's what makes us human. We're all unique. And he's come out, he's admitted to taking whatever he did 20 years ago. It doesn't matter. I don't know one politician that hasn't done something somewhere at some time. Well, you know, well, if they're going to... I don't know about yeah. politician, Mary. The human being, I think, would substitute for that, yeah, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, but in this, in this particular instance, we're talking about somebody who's going to be the next leader of our country, you know. And for me, I would rather it was you who was the next leader, me personally. But, you know, we can't always get what we want, as we've seen with Brexit. It's not been that simple because they've just made a complete kerfuffle of it. But the bottom line is, is it doesn't really matter. I'm only interested in what he's done in the last few years. He's not a career criminal. So why should it make a difference? OK, Meredith, put very clearly, and I have to say that I think that probably is going to be the common view. If, you, if that's completely wrong, call me 0345 973 You're listening to the Sunday edition of The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC, and it is 10.15. This is LBC. Here, yeah, Chris Akabosi. Yeah? You know how you can boost the Labrooks Akka? Yes. Does that make it a Akka boosty? <laughs> Brilliant. New Labrooks customers can get £20 in free bets when they bet £5 on any sport with promo code 23. Labrooks, where the nation plays. And when the fun stops, stop. 18 plus online customers, min odds 1 to 2, must be placed within 14 days of registration. Free bet valid for 7 days. Stake not return. PayPal and certain deposit types excluded. Full terms at labrooks.com. I'm Dr. Michael Mosley, creator of the world famous 5-2 diet. Now I'm taking 5-2 to the next level with my Fast 800 recipe book, a 16-page glossy pullout, free inside this weekend's Mail on Sunday. Brand new, delicious recipes to help you lose weight fast and keep it off. Transform your health in weeks. You get to enjoy tasty treats too. My Fast 800 recipe book, free inside the Mail on Sunday. To all who've travelled with Eurotunnel the Shuttle, the outdoorsy types, foodie types, E-types, Jaguars, dogs, cats, alpacas, boot packers, last minute packers, kitchen sink packers, motorhomes, motorbikers, mountain bikers, surfboarders, snowboarders, crossing boarders with feet up on the dashboarders, long legs, first legs, first timers, and the let's just take it all in our own timers. It's our 25th birthday, but we're wishing you many happy returns. Join the celebration at Eurotunnel.com. Love your skin. Love your hair. Love your nails. Perfectil delivers nutritional support from within, including zinc, to help you maintain normal skin, hair and nails. Perfectil, the science of beauty from Vitabiotics, the UK's number one vitamin company. From Boots, Pharmacies and Vitabiotics.com. Bangers and mash. Showers and power ballads, tea and toast. Some things just belong together. And if you own a small business, your double act is work you and life you. So at Starling Bank, we mix pleasure with business too. Manage your banking from one beautifully simple app with no monthly fees, instant spending notifications and 24-7 support. Apply in minutes today and say hello to the ultimate work-life bank balance. Just search for Starling Bank, the bank that works like you. Eligibility criteria applies. 
Dan, are you ready yet? Just need to finish off my hair. Well, hurry up. And I'm a shirt, pick my shoes and rub on some beard oil. Usually, you have to put in a little extra to look the part. However, with the Fiesta ST Line 3 door, with its unique full-body styling kit and sports tuned suspension, from just £199 per month on Ford Personal Lease, we've done that little bit extra for you. Search Fiesta 199 for more information. Oh, I don't need to finish off my teeth. Ford, together we go further. Advanced rental of £1,791. 47 monthly rentals of £199 provided by ALD Automotive Limited. Subject to status, you will not own the car. Additional charges may apply. Subject to mileage and condition. Leading Britain's conversation. LBC, The Nigel Farage Show. If Michael Gove took cocaine 20 years ago, does that mean he's not fit to be Prime Minister? Chris in Darlington says, if cocaine is supposed to give you an inflated sense of how intelligent, attractive and charismatic you are, the problem with Michael Gove is that the effects don't seem to have worn off. Okay, Chris. Well, let me say something for Michael Gove. Uh, And that is, and I'm going to say for the third time this morning, my worry is this whole campaign gets dragged down by what people have said or done 20 years ago and not where we're going in the future. A really interesting piece by Gove in the Sunday Telegraph. Scrap VAT and launch a lower, simpler sales tax. And this actually is good politics because, and not everyone knows this, VAT was a European Economic Community Tax. We didn't have VAT before 1973. We put it into place because we were joining what was then known as the common market. And by leaving, if we want, we can get rid of it and replace it with something that is simpler. And certainly, be a lot of people, millions of people out there running their own businesses, uh, acting as sole traders and above the VAT threshold, would welcome getting rid of a time-consuming, slightly complicated tax, which... If you don't pay it on time, they come down on you like an absolute ton of bricks. So that, I think, is good politics. That is the debate that we need to have going forwards. Whether we're going to be able to remains to be seen, because I worry that now the scene has been set and it's going to be a full-on confessional for the next goodness knows how many weeks. Let's go to Formby and speak to John. Good morning, John. Good morning, Nigel. How are you? I am well, but I'm curious, John. You know, what in someone's past, what's the red line that should stop them going on to become Prime Minister? Um, well, I think heavy duty stuff. Yeah. Um, we're talking about murder, uh, violence, uh, fraud, corruption, those sort of things. But yes. You, you, youthful or even um, uh, middle aged indiscretions with uh, exotic substances um, can be treated perhaps more sympathetically. What about drink driving, John? Um, even, even, even that. Because um, uh, the, 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 there's quite a big spectrum with that. The, there's the, the unlucky person who's just one or two points over. Right? And then there's the maniac who uh, ploughs into a minibus of school kids. Yep, I do understand that. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, John, you're of a certain age. I'm of a certain age, and we kind of used to think, if somebody got drunk driving, oh, bad luck, old boy, you know, rotten luck, you know, because actually they were driving home from the same pub every night, two or three times the limit. But the younger generation take a much more judgmental view, don't they? Uh, Yeah, yes, but uh, I think you have to do it on a case-by-case basis. Um, uh, One thing that's occurred to me, um, that if we'd banned... Uh, from politics, anyone who'd run through a wheat field, we might have saved ourselves a lot of grief. Well, absolutely. One or two cartoonists, there's a wonderful cartoon today of Michael Gove running through a a crop of coca, which I thought was really rather splendid. So, do you think, think, John, as a seasoned observer of this stuff, do you think that the charge of hypocrisy is perhaps the one that Michael Gove could be in trouble on? Oh, absolutely. Uh, When when I did A-levels, history uh, one of our uh, um, uh, subjects was uh, called Disraeli and the Rise of Tory Democracy. Mm-hmm. I think what we're seeing now is uh, the rise or the return of to- Tory hypocrisy. Because it's all very well um, to uh, lambast uh, middle class uh, drug users in London or wherever uh, when you're one of them yourself. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, it's as uh, one of my old teachers used to say to me, in this country, it, it's uh, don't do as I do, do as I say. Simple as that. And it, 
does look a little bit like that, doesn't it? So, do you think Michael's chances are finished then for this leadership contest? Oh, uh, well, I, 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 I hope so. Not for that reason. I mean, I, I, I just don't like him. Uh, well, that's a perfectly good reason then, isn't it? They're uh, boring from Anne Widdicombe. Uh, uh, about him, I would say there, there is something um, uh, too much of the school sneak about him. Um, uh, yeah. w- what really turned me against him uh, was uh, his, his uh, attack on the private schools. Uh, now, uh, we, we, we virtually destroyed the grammar schools. Uh, please don't add to the folly. OK, John, pretty clear there. Forget the cocaine. He thinks goes are wrong and Anyway, Ben is a first-time caller from Holmfirth in West Yorkshire. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Nigel. How are you, sir? Welcome. I'm fine, thank you. Good, um, good. Now, now you're, you're last of a summer wine country there, aren't you, I, I think? Cer- I certainly am. I certainly am. Yeah, so, very, uh, mass- uh, massive Brexit area as well, Nigel. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Many parts of Yorkshire yeah. were. So, Ben, you know, what do you think? I mean, it, people have... Sm- admissions here that people have... Um, smoke cannabis or taking cocaine um boris's is the funniest one you know absolutely Did you yeah read, it's all- I, I, I just read this to you boris johnson told the sun on sunday i tried cocaine at oxford and cannabis <laughs> before university i was given cocaine but i sneezed so it didn't go up my nose i mean it's a bit like bill clinton <laughs> isn't it you know i didn't oh, inhale i mean i mean it's pathetic isn't it it is absolutely pathetic. But for me, a, a person's past Nigel doesn't, you know, take into complacement with, with obviously what's happening in the country right now. We need to deliver Brexit by the 31st of October, prefer, preferably without a no, with a no deal, of course. Um, but, you know, we need someone to really lead this country. And to be honest, the candidates at this moment in time are just not going to do it for me at all. Uh, they keep going back on the words and... It's well, just not right for me, Nigel. I really don't. No, you ben, I'm, get you. ben, I get that. And, and, and in about five or seven minutes, I'm going to have Pretty Patel on the phone here. And yeah. she, of course, is one of only 28 MPs that voted against Mrs May's new treaty on all three occasions. So, so, wow. so to someone like you, Ben, she's the real deal, all right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and she's come out overnight written an article, and we'll talk about it in a few minutes, and she's backing Boris. She thinks Boris is the person to deliver Brexit. What confidence do you have, Ben? Um, to be honest, Nigel, I don't have a right lot. Um, to be honest, he keeps going back on his word. It was the same with the leadership challenge in 2017 with the general election, everything like that. You know, he went completely back on, on what he was wanting to do. Um, and I just don't think he will be the right man to lead to lead our country or Michael Gove uh, in that fact as well. So uh, it's a tough one, but I think the Brexit party is literally going to be the second major party in this country for the next general election. I really do. That's if we don't deliver Brexit. Of well, course, well it, yeah, I, I, I think predicting the future, Ben, is is a very, very difficult thing. Um, politics is in a state of flux, and it isn't just the Conservatives having a tough time. And we'll be talking about Labour from the top of the hour. Ben, thank you for your call. Stephen Brighton's very clear. I don't care about people's pasts unless they've committed a truly serious crime. I'm much more interested in their objective record of achievement. Well, Steve, I think that makes a lot of sense. Sticking with Steve's, we're going to Nottingham. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Nigel. Hi, hi. Um, My position is this, and you've you've mentioned it, it's the hypocrisy issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, When Gove was education minister, he said that any teacher caught in possession of class A's would not be able to teach in the classroom. And this is the problem. You see, there are lawmakers, they make the law... Um, ergo, they can't go around breaking it. Now, I know, you know, we can all be flippant and have a little laugh about it, but cocaine does kill a lot of people and cause a lot of misery. Cannabis, on the other hand, has never killed anyone by overdose. There is not one recorded death by overdose of cannabis. So I can make a distinction well, between uh, those two I, things. I, I, I suspect, Steve, listening right now, one or two people who work in mental health who will be shouting at the radio, Steve, at what you've just said, because doesn't ca- hasn't cannabis, particularly the stronger, more recent forms of it in, 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 in terms of resin, hasn't it caused huge psychological damage across this country? No, absolutely not. That's that's not the case. My brother is a really? consultant psychiatrist, and he is just seeking to get his license to pre- to prescribe it. 
Um, that's that's a complete myth. It's it's been attacked by the establishment for sort of the best part of a hundred years, um, decriminalised uh, because of that. And as I say, not one recorded death by overdose. You, you can't even say that about it. Well, you certainly can't say that about alcohol. Absolutely not. So, Steve, you're saying there's no linkage between increased psychosis, particularly in young people, and smoking skunk or or resin-based cannabis? Uh, Well, I'm not saying Mm. that. I don't Mm. think anybody under sort of 17, 18 uh, should do it habitually. Of course not. not. Not strong weed, absolutely not. But, you know, let's get it regulated properly. So the argument is that you regulate it, you sell it in one of the big pharmaceutical chains, and you tax it, you take it out of the criminal's hands. Well, yeah, absolutely, and you let people do it themselves as well if they if they need it for medication, no, definitely. There is, a, no, there is an argument. But Steve, you're right, it is very difficult, isn't it? If you've said to teachers they will all be sacked if they're caught with Class A drugs, and now you say, yep. ah, but I'm different because I can be the Prime Minister. No, it's a point very, very well made, Steve. Do you think Gove's unfit? on that basis? Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I, I do think he's unfit on that basis. OK, Steve, thank you very much indeed. Great call. Theresa May had her red lines and Michael Gove had his white lines. Former drug-taking reflects society, says Peter in Lansing. Red lines and white lines, quite good, quite clever, quite funny. Right, we're going to speak to Pretty Patel. How can Pretty Patel, 28 times... She votes against that appalling new treaty, the worst deal in history. How can she back Boris, who twice in those division lobbies was with her? And then he decided to vote for it. We're going to ask Pretty that very question. You're listening to the Sunday edition of Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It's 10.30 in time for the news headlines with Philip Chrysikos. Boris Johnson is promising not to pay the £39 billion Brexit divorce bill unless the EU agrees to better withdrawal terms. He's one of 11 Conservatives hoping to be the party's new leader and Prime Minister. Another, Michael Gove, says he'd replace VAT if he were elected. Two men have been arrested on suspicion of murder after the death of a woman in Essex. In her 50s, she was found injured at an address in Burnham on Crouch in the early hours. Tens of thousands of protesters have taken to the streets of Hong Kong, demonstrating against proposed changes to extradition laws. They would allow some suspects to be sent to mainland China to face charges. LBC weather. Sunshine and scattered showers, particularly across the north and the west. Lighter winds than yesterday, a high of 19 degrees. This is LBC. Sheila Fogarty, Monday to Friday from 1pm. I think the opposite, Colin. I think it will mobilise both well, sides think, uh, enormously. Oh, well, I don't think... I'm and will you to, vote? I don't know. It depends on how, how, you, how you... I can't how imagine they... why you wouldn't if you're this passionate well, about if, your if, position. I know what's going to happen. There'll be three questions and I'll blow the voting age of 16. What if so there I, are two questions and it's the same age of voting? Will you vote? I, I mean, I, I can't already, imagine... Already, I already voted. Sheila Fogarty. With Blink, an Amazon company, helping give your family peace of mind. LBC. Unlock the city with the new Range Rover Evoque. Know your. From your. Know your side streets. From your inner city beats. Know your underbelly. And where to fill your belly. Your lamb, madam. Know your north. From your south. Live for the city with the new Range Rover Evoque. Land Rover, above and beyond. Block management. Two very simple words. But what do they actually mean? Well, there's budget approval, for starters, then service charge invoices, health and safety, paperwork, cleaning, gardening, maintenance, inspections, contracts, insurance, emergency call-outs, and a whole lot more besides. So for complete block management solutions, just remember three simple letters, ABC. ABC Estates will take care of all your day-to-day management, leaving you as happy as Larry. See abcestates.co.uk or call 0800 888 At the Bank of Antandek, they're looking for a mascot. We need an icon. Something that says high fly to all our mortgage customers. Like a falcon or a stallion. Or even better, a parrot. Check it out. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Santander, they're concentrating on helping customers find ways to take years off their mortgage with their overpayment calculator. See what's possible at Santander. All applications are subject to status and our lending criteria. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. Did you know Diesel has unleashed a new scent that could be right up Dad Street this Father's Day? 
Spirit of the Brave has roared into stores and is ready to try and buy at the perfume shop. Plus, we'll wrap Dad's gift for free in-store or click and collect online and pick up in 30 minutes. Shop the latest scents 24-7 at theperfumeshop.com. Have you had an operation that has left you with persistent pain around the healed scar? You may feel this pain as burning, aching, shooting, throbbing, or stabbing. At St Pancras Clinical Research, we're looking at a new potential treatment for this pain, which we apply topically. The study will take place in London, and if you volunteer, you'll be paid for your time and reasonable expenses. Find out more at stpancrasclinicalresearch.com. That's stpancrasclinicalresearch.com. Leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Well, it's all cocaine and cannabis today, isn't it? And I, I'm guessing it's going to be for the next few days, which is a bit of a pity because what we're talking about here is who is going to be the next Prime Minister? Who is the person most likely to achieve Brexit on the 31st of October? And I noticed, flicking through the newspapers this morning, an article by Prissy Patel. I'll back Boris to make Britain greater. Well, joining me on the line is the former International Development Secretary and Conservative Conservative Member of Parliament for Witham in Essex. Pretty Patel, good morning to you. Good morning, Nigel. So, you know, you are one of, and if I'm wrong, you correct me, but you're one, I think, of 28 mm -hmm. Conservative Members of Parliament who three times voted against that new European treaty. Yes, that's absolutely correct. And, you know, I'm very proud of the fact that I did, because as we've seen, Nigel, over the last few years, but during this whole process in Parliament, MPs just sort of wanted to go with the flow and be complicit in signing away even more powers due to the European Court of Justice and our money as well to the European Union. And that, to me, is not Brexit, and that's not leaving the European Union. Well, you and I will be absolutely at one on that. But what was interesting about all of that was that... A couple of people, Dominic Raab was one, and he, mm. you know, he resigned his position and to, 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 to vote against that treaty. Um, you know, Esther McVeigh, another one, uh, she resigned to vote against the treaty. And, of course, Boris Johnson, who didn't just twice vote against it, but wrote these columns in the Daily Telegraph, you know, talking about vassalage, talking about yes. us becoming a slave state. <coughs> I mean, using language even stronger than I would. And yet all three of them, on the third go, voted for something they'd condemned before. Why? I mean, all three are running to be leader yeah. of the party. Mm -hmm. Why would I, why would you, why would we trust any of them if they tell us something is really bad for the nation sure. and then they support it? Well, I think this is about trust, of course. And as someone that has campaigned to leave the European Union, even before I became a member of Parliament, I think trust is exactly the issue at stake here. All three of those candidates, by the way, will need to justify their own actions. So I'm not going to defend any of them on their voting record. But what I would say is that Boris in particular has been abundantly clear. And I do, I do trust him on this now because, to be fair, I've put his feet to fire many, many times over recent weeks as well in terms of leaving on the 31st of October. Not just handing our cash over, he's spoken about conditionality around the money, holding it back, making sure that we, if we don't get a free trade deal, an arrangement, then quite frankly we're leaving, we're off. And that we no longer go to the EU with a begging bowl, a begging bowl basically asking them if we can leave. That is simply not on. And to be fair to Boris, he's been very clear about this. And the other thing that I would say about him too is, of course, he resigned because of checkers, that whole scenario and fiasco over checkers. I'm astonished that anyone with any Brexit credentials went into government after checkers when it was pretty clear in terms of where the writing was, in terms of the direction of travel, on the whole withdrawal agreement with checkers, all of it was going to be a disaster, a stitch up basically with the EU. And, you know, to a certain extent now we've been proven right on that. <laughs> So you, you, you're going to have this first round of voting. I mean, there was speculation that Boris would not make the last two in the Conservative Parliamentary Party. He's now got 55 backers. Are you confident that he'll get down to the last two? 
Well, look, I mean, I'd never say it's I'd be confident or it's a done deal because, to be fair, the nominations only close tomorrow, Nigel. Yeah, yeah. The first vote is on Thursday. Anything could happen. And I have seen previously that these contests are thoroughly unpredictable. But what I would say very clearly is that the country desperately now needs an inspirational figure to set us back on the right course. And it's clear with Boris in particular, we're going to leave. He's very, very, he has a conviction around that as well. You know, he will be single minded and will not be knocked off course in the way in which, you know, we've, hear, we've heard some candidates be a little bit wishy washy about this as well, talking about delay, talking about, you know, waiting to hear back from the commission. Well, quite frankly, time is too short. We need to leave and we need to rebuild our country domestically, but also, you know, gain, gain some credibility back on the international stage. We have been humiliated over the last three oh, years. Look, we're a laughing stock on the world stage right at the mm. moment. Absolutely. So let's just say Boris, and he is the favourite, the strong favourite. Let's say that he comes through. He becomes Prime Minister. He set out his stall already. We will be leaving on the 31st of October. Mind you, I do remember Mrs. Mrs. May saying a similar thing about the 29th of March, but, sure. we'll, but we'll move on from that for now. Even if Boris gets popular public support for that position, what happens if Parliament simply won't let him do it? Is he a man? Does he have the courage, in your view, in a situation like that, does he extend Article 50 for another six months? Or would he go to the country and call a general election? Well, I think there is no, no option when it comes to extending at all. I mean, come on. We've done that. We've been there, seen there, got the T-shirt. You have as well, Nigel, clearly with your recent campaigns too. (laughs) There is another point here as well. You know, it's a fact. I mean, I sit in Parliament. I've voted three times against the withdrawal agreement. I've spoken in these debates on Europe. And they are hostile debates. There's a lot of incoming fire, fire from MPs that, you know, have the Remain position despite having leave constituencies. We are now at the stage where I think, quite frankly, Boris does recognise this, that you know, even if some MPs don't agree with us leaving, they do not have the right to stand in the way of democracy. And the reality of that means, you know, if you are trying to defend Remain, trying to keep us wedded to the European Union and you represent a lead constituency, you're actually working against the very people that elect you. And you know this as well as I do. I think both of us have spent enough time on the doorstep traveling the country. The public are sick to death of this. They want a prime minister, a leader that's going to lead and to make sure that we leave. And if Parliament says no, then quite frankly, I think MPs will feel the repercussions of that in an election in due course. And let me just ask you finally, Priti, give us a prediction. Will we leave on the 31st of October? I'm absolutely adamant. (laughs) I'm adamant and I will do everything possible, including people putting people's feet to fire on this as well. This is not a negotiation anymore, Nigel. We have to leave. We owe it to the country. We've had three years of decline and malaise. You're adamant that you want it, but that wasn't the question. (laughs) Is it going to happen? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. OK, okay, right, well, there we are. I, I hope, very much hope you're right. Thank you for joining us. Well, that was pretty Patel, sounding pretty bullish. It's all going to be fine. Boris will be PM. We're leaving on the 31st of October. We will see. Back to Michael Gove's drug-taking. Accusations against him also of hypocrisy. I love Pretty Patel. What a shame she didn't run for the leadership. I certainly hope she'll have a role on the front bench. But which position would she prefer? Well, Patrick, I didn't ask her that. Um, but, but you know, she has got a support base, but clearly not enough MPs to back her to have a run herself. Now, most of you are saying that you've got to judge people on their achievements in politics um and barry from burton upon trent makes a point that uh, in america uh, we've got somebody there in donald trump who has shall we say a colorful past but who has turned around the american economy nigel the problem with michael gove is his personal brand of moral relativism if it suits gove that it's morally okay. Well, I think that's absolutely right, uh, Alison. You know, this was the... The strongest call that we've had this morning was the point Steve made that Boris said to teachers, if you're caught with Class A drugs, you're out, you're gone. 
And yet, in his case, it's OK to become prime minister. And that, I think, does put him in a very difficult position, which I'm guessing is one of the reasons why uh, the bookmaker's odds, as David Wooding told us earlier, have changed this morning. Angela is calling from Oldham. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Nigel. I'd like to say it, I'm not concerned about what they did 20 years ago, as apart from drugs. Now, Boris, to me, Boris is neither use nor ornament. He forgets what he says. In the 2005 election, he was asked his view on drugs. He said, what's my view on drugs? I've forgotten my view on drugs. Well, if he, if he forgets about um, his Brex, Brexit, Brexit um, mm. uh, views, what's to say he gets in and forgets them again? So I would say uh, Dominic Raab is a better bet. Michael Gove is too slimy. He's too much of a brutus. Slimy? It's a really, yes. it's a really tough word, Angela. It, but it does. It comes across as a fair weather friend. It just tells you what he thinks you want to hear. But and I think he would stab you in the back. And, at the end. And, and did he stab Boris in the back back in 2016? He, well, he stabbed him in the front. Right. It was, actually, I suppose in a sense you're right. He did. He, he was stabbed in the front, wasn't he? And, yes, and, he was. And sticking with Boris, when Boris says, I was given cocaine, but I sneezed, so it didn't go up my nose. How believable is that? Um, I should call, call. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very good. Angela, thank you very much indeed for your call. Michael Gove's revelation should not affect his bid to be Prime Minister. It will, however, be hard to get over the line, says John in Adelston. And I think that's probably right, uh, John. I think until this story moved on to being one, perhaps, of hypocrisy in terms of what he wrote in newspapers and said to teachers, I think up until that point, this would have been written off. I think now he really has got a problem, um, and I'm guessing that makes Boris an even stronger favourite. And yet, of all the people that were asked this question yesterday about what illegal drugs they had or had not taken, the only one that gave a totally unbelievable answer was Boris Johnson. So there are other problems there too. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC, and it is 10.45. Here on LBC, Majid Nawaz, this afternoon from 12. To overuse phrases like Nazi, fascist, racist, is because at the end of the day, what it does is it undermines the seriousness of those political tendencies when they do occur. It becomes very difficult for when the actual fascist or Nazi emerges for people to believe them. Others will have to live with those consequences, such as me. Leading Britain's conversation, Majid Nawaz on LBC. Some people find love by chance. I found love in my Citroen dealership. I looked at new Citroen C5 Across SUV with advanced comfort seats, a boom! They said, pay £1,794 up front, then £299 a month for 35 months. I love it. Visit your local Citroen dealership and find love too. New Citroen C5 Across SUV. Citroen. Citroen UK Limited, a credit broker, not a lender, offer on PureTech 136, speed manual, 10,000 miles per annum. You won't own the car. Personal contract, high terms, eligibility and return conditions apply. PSA Finance UK Limited. Divorce can be expensive. It affects your finances, assets, home, savings, pension, and most of all, your relationship with your children. It's probably one of the toughest times you'll ever go through. Cordell and Cordell understands these issues and helps men maximize their roles in their children's lives. Call now on 0330-6060-161 or visit cordellcordell.co.uk, office in central London. A partner men can count on. Muscular pain oh. can last all day Ow. and night. Ouch! And Neurofen's new pain relief can do the same. Introducing the UK's only clinically proven 24-hour ibuprofen patch. It delivers ibuprofen directly to the site of pain for all day and all night pain relief. Ah. Neurofen Joint and Muscular Pain Relief Medicated Plaster contains ibuprofen for short-term pain relief of muscle strains and sprains close to the joint of upper or lower limb. Always read the label. For hundreds of years, Indian food has been about sharing great food with the people you love. For over five years, Manjal Restaurant have brought North and South India together in the heart of London. 
and due to its success, now we've come to Chigwell Lauten. Experience the essence of India and make memories with Manjal. Book now at manjalrestaurant.com. Have you ever bought an investment sold by Barclays, Halifax, Lloyds, Santander or any other bank or financial advisor? Investments like stocks and shares ISAs, investment bonds and certain types of pension can be risky. If you lost money with one of these investments, you could be owed thousands of pounds in compensation. Even if you no longer have the investment or the paperwork, here at Goodwin Barrett, we can still help. To start your free assessment with Goodwin Barrett, text SOLD to 6677. That's SOLD to 6677. Get Vodafone's Double Data deal this summer. We're giving away double data on all pay monthly smartphones. Yes, all pay monthly smartphones. Now a huge 30 gig for the price of 15, starting at only £30 a month. Double the selfie sharing, double the playlist pumping and double the maps mapping. To get double data, go online or in-store today. The future's exciting. Ready? Vodafone. Terms and details at vodafone.co.uk slash summer ends 9th of July. Let's hear it for Ozzy, the nature-loving pug. He thought he'd get a buzz out of eating a bumblebee in the garden. Ouch! Oh. Luckily, his family didn't get stung, because Pets in a Pickle had little Ozzy covered. And now he's back in the garden, chasing butterflies. Phew! For pet insurance policies as unique as they are, get a free quote today at petsinapickle.co.uk. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. It's Confession Sunday, cocaine, cannabis. We're hearing about the past of all these Tory leadership candidates and our next Prime Minister. And most of you really couldn't give a damn, it seems to me, what people did 20 years ago, provided it's nothing too heinous. But against Michael Gove, there's the charge of hypocrisy and against Boris Johnson the charge of total unbelievability that he tried cocaine but he sneezed therefore he didn't really take it I mean please Boris surely you can do better than that let's go to Adam a new caller in Littlehampton good morning Adam good morning Nigel so is it okay is it okay for Michael Gove to say I took cannabis I'm uh, sorry I took cocaine I'm fit to be prime minister but not for a school teacher <laughs> Well, Michael Gove's failed on a lot of things in the past, doesn't he? His education record as uh, education minister was quite a shambles, really. Well, I think um, I think some school standards did improve during his time, Adam, actually. I, I to be fair. To differ. I've got two autistic children who... The special needs provisions in this area are absolutely shocking. Um, it's the Conservative government that's had hold of that in the past, and um, he was at the helm of the education minister minister position so it it is quite hypocritical and yeah the cocaine well, well, revelation I mean, yeah i mean, <laughs> I I mean some that. as i say adam some people think he was a good education secretary but hey i mean you can always argue about no. these things but yeah. on the, but on the cocaine thing i mean should the fact that he took it 20 years ago several times socially should that of itself disbar him right it, that doesn't matter what matters now are are they on drugs now <laughs> yep. right um we as working class common citizens when we go for common you know work placements etc mm -hmm. um it could be working at a railway station mm -hmm. we asked if we can undergo a drugs test now shouldn't that be the same for public office you know wow. i find it there's you know that hypocritical position of you know or oh, they took drugs in the past yeah everybody's taken drugs in the past when i was younger i smoked a lot of cannabis but that hasn't affected me today but what happens today is, you know, there's so many backwards positions on Brexit, which is the biggest political um, situation we're in at the moment. And we shouldn't be listening to, oh, so-and-so done this and so-and-so done that. What are they, you know, doing now? And, you know, Boris voting for the withdrawal agreement in the last round, that was just, you know... I just I extraordinary. Know whether he's actually going to make Prime Minister... You know, just there's extra so many things wrong with it, and it's selling our country out. So, Adam, are you, so you're a Brexiteer, Adam, are you? Definitely, I'm yeah. a Brexit so, Party supporter, and I was right. uh, visited okay. the rally in Shoreham recently. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I was, I was all, all, all over the country in the last six or eight <laughs> weeks. I can't remember where I've been really, but that was at an aircraft hangar. I seem to remember. Um, That's right. Yeah. Of the list of runners and riders to become the next prime minister, 
which of them would you have most confidence in as a Brexiteer? Mm. Mm. Um, you're really asking me which <laughs> number chamber in the gun I really want to aim at my head with. It's, well, know, well, no, 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 Adam, it's perfectly, it's perfectly fine to say no, it's perfectly fine to say no confidence in any if that's how you feel about it. That that's, that is pretty much how I feel. However, you know, one of them is going to be elected. One of them will yes, yes, be our absolutely. next prime minister. So we have to have a view. But come on, you know, we have to look at their achievements. Yes, we have to look at what they're doing now. What is their stance now? Um, you know, Esther McVeigh, she's been a, a staunch Brexiteer the whole way through the whole we want to leave on a managed WTO exit. None of this crashing out with no deal nonsense. It's absolutely absurd. But, you know, when it comes to the withdrawal agreement, we have a massive investment in the European Investment Bank. How come is the European well, Union are going to drip that back to us in payments over ten years? Well, I think well, it's a lot. They it's, want thirty-nine I, billion from us now. I think it's a lot. Long, <laughs> I think you'll find Adam is a lot longer than ten years. Adam, we mustn't get stuck on it, but it's good, good to hear from you, and I thank you. I'm going to go to Hammersmith and speak to David, another new caller. Good morning, David. Hello, Nigel. I was talking about this um, Go situation and yes. the others. If, yes. if they're there. Four considerations. Mm -hmm. One, did he declare it to the constituency party when he became a party candidate? Well, he, he, was he, he, didn't, did he? Well, was he asked it? Well, he only came clean because an article was going to be published, so that's two. Mm -hmm. So both of those suggest a kind of deceitful, you know, attitude. Three, if it was another crime that also carried a seven-year sentence, as you get for possession of a Class A drug, um, such as fraud or sex offending or whatever, would that be okay? Of course it wouldn't. Of now, course not, the fourth, no. The fourth one is, drugs are responsible for a huge amount of crime and murder, county lines and so on and so forth. It's one of the biggest problems facing us right now. If we wanted, if we've decided that we, we demand tougher sentences... How could he be objective? Because he, you know, people with weak minds who take drugs and, or took drugs, they will accept it. They, we, you know, but we have to recognise how bad that is for our country and, and the, the damage it's doing. And people who, who, who just kind of shrug their shoulders and think, oh, well, I did it at a party or whatever. No, that means you're weak. It means that, that you know, you, you, you're not fit to, to, to run a country, never mind be an MP. OK, fine. So... You know, you're, 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 you're very, very clear there, David, that he should be disqualified on the basis that he took this decision. Would that disqualify Boris Johnson as well? Probably. Even though he sneezed? I don't give a damn about that nonsense. I mean, that's, again, it's just, you know, prevaricating. It's just denial. But, you know, it's, it's, it's like his, his uh, water um, jets things, his water cannons, his bridge, his, you know, uh, presiding over these daft cycle lanes. All of it is, is just nonsense. But, of course, what he has got a, an eye for is a new airport with his buddies, you know, the, the people who want to build this airport in the estuary. You know, so you can be think, sure that if he I gets in, that will yeah, happen. I think that's passed by a bit, but, hey, maybe not. David, let me ask you, who amongst that list of runners and riders would you have confidence in to be our next Prime Minister? None of them. None nor of them. Corbyn either. Nor Corbyn either, to be honest. Right. I think what, I think what if, to be honest, I think if one of them said, you know what, our politics has failed us because um, we, we had this referendum, we then had um, MPs wouldn't allow anything to pass, so you've got three years to change your MPs, we're going to revoke Article 50, but the next election is going to be fought purely on, on Brexit, you know, meanwhile we're going to get on with running the country, I might have some respect. If they were honest enough to say that, none of them are. Mm. Because, to be honest, we, the, the, the issue we face right now is constitutionally, it doesn't matter who you put in, because it's the, you know, it's, it's the same thing. It's just a, diff a different figurehead. You know, it's, it's, nothing has changed. The mathematics in Parliament hasn't changed. And um, it's, you know, I can guarantee you, whatever they're saying now in the, in the you know, oh, I'm going to do no deal and all of that, it's, it's rubbish. They're not going to do it. They're going to, you know, so you know, I don't think we can have a second referendum well, because that uh, wouldn't be right. Yeah, I think, because I think politically, David, if one of them wins, saying very clearly, we are leaving on the 31st of October and then doesn't, then goodness knows where we go. David, thank you. I want to squeeze in Paul from Brighton. Good morning, Paul. Uh, good morning, Nigel. How are you? I am fine. So... Can I quick... 
can I quickly say we should? I demand a second uh, Peterborough uh, by-election. You can, and I'm going to talk can about. Pe- I'm going to talk about Peterborough very shortly. Yeah, no, that's just that's just, yeah. a, that's just a joke. Well, yeah. well, well no, it's not a joke because why not? You it know, is a joke. Yeah. why not? So cocaine use, Paul, does it disbar yeah. people from office? I think it's sure. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why, Nigel. Because uh, my, my son rung me up years ago, a New Year's Eve party. He said, "Dad, come and get me." I said, "What's the problem?" He said, "There's snorting cocaine in the to- in Jen's toilets." Mm-hmm. I said, "Look, get 300 yards away. Wait for me. I'll pick you up three o'clock in the morning." Mm-hmm. And, and I got him away, and there was a raid, and the whole there were a lot of arrests. And that. He's now in America. He wouldn't have got in there had he been caught. Oh uh, gosh, he would have been implicated because he was there. Now he's an American. He's got a professional job. A professional person. So that's my point. And county lines, the county lines are uh, these. These guys are bringing drugs down to people like Gove, and uh, the you know the the elite the elite section of our community. And that's why it's so important that you cannot do drugs and think you're going to get away with it because you're wrecking lives. Yeah. Well, Paul, I have to say that's a very very good tale you've just told and. Good, you, good for you, going out at 3 o'clock in the morning on New Year's Eve to pick up your son from that party. Otherwise, he wouldn't be in America. Paul, thank you. And yeah, be in no doubt, you know, and just re- sort of finish on this point, that actually cocaine is, if you're found in possession or dealing, it is serious. You, know, you, you, you get a potentially long prison sentence. Right, that's the Conservatives. So what about Labour? So, on Thursday night, Labour narrowly saw off the Brexit Party challenge to hold on to Peterborough. Lisa Forbes is their new Member of Parliament, so it should all be cheers. It should be magnificent. But actually, at the end of this week, let me ask you, does Jeremy Corbyn look more or less like a Prime Minister? And if you think it's been a great week, he won Peterborough, call 0345 6060 If, like me, you think, actually, he's had a disastrous week, he looks further away than ever, Text to 84850 and please tweet. Tell me, if not Corbyn, who next for Labour? Use the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And of course, you can watch us on Facebook and you can comment there too. On your radio, on Global Player and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom, at 11 o'clock, Boris Johnson says he would step up no-deal Brexit preparations and withhold the £39 billion divorce settlement from the EU if he becomes Prime Minister. I always thought it was extraordinary. We should agree to write that entire cheque before having a final deal. I don't wish to conduct a post-mortem of the the original negotiations, but it was extraordinary that we agreed to pay the money in advance of a deal on the future partnership. Boris Johnson's words, the Sunday Times, is as the Conservatives' former International Development Secretary Priti Patel has told Nigel while she's supporting Mr Johnson for leader despite him once voting for Theresa May's Brexit deal. I do trust him on this now. I've put his feet to fire many times over recent weeks in terms of leaving on the 31st of October. Not just handing our cash over, making sure we don't get a free trade deal and arrangement, then quite frankly we're leaving, we're off. And that we no longer go to the EU with a begging bowl, asking them if we can leave. That is simply not on. It's as Conservative leadership rival Michael Gove is setting out plans to replace VAT with an alternative while Sadiq Javid is promising to slow the pace of national debt reduction to give more money to education. Another Conservative hoping to be the party's new leader is Jeremy Hunt. This is the Foreign Secretary's reaction to if he would pull the UK out of the EU on October the 31st. What a wise Prime Minister will do is take decisions on the basis of the choices that they have in front of them. If you say the 31st of October is a deadline come what may and then parliament blocks no deal the only way you can deliver that promise is to have an election and change parliament and that would be catastrophic for the conservative party separately liberal democrat leadership hopeful sir ed davey is ruling out a pact with other remain parties and independent mps who want to avoid brexit let's talk the party's next leader would be open to an alliance but sir ed has told lbc those mps must join his party to influence change from within in other headlines this hour a labor mp has been been reported to the party's chief whip for supporting protesters over LGBT 
Equality training at a Birmingham primary school. Roger Gossif has told them that their right, Shadow Education Secretary Angela Rayner, says his words are discriminatory and irresponsible. Talks have been taking place to have video gaming as part of the Olympics. Technology company Intel is leading those discussions, admitting some people will have trouble accepting video gaming as a sport. Scotland's women's football manager Shelley Kerr says the pressure is 100% on England this afternoon. The two nations meet in the French city of Nice for their opening World Cup game. LBC weather, sunshine and scattered showers, particularly across the north and the west. Lighter winds than yesterday, a high of 19 degrees. From Global's newsroom, for LBC, I'm Philip Krisikos. Unlock the city with the new Range Rover Evoque. Know your... From your... Know your side streets from your inner city beats. Know your underbelly and where to fill your belly. Your lamb, madam. Know your north from your south. Live for the city with the new Range Rover Evoque. Land Rover above and beyond. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. So on Friday morning at about nine o'clock, who turned up in Peterborough but Jeremy Corbyn? And there he was, hugging and kissing the newly elected Member of Parliament for Peterborough, one Lisa Forbes. And it was an upbeat, strong Jeremy Corbyn saying that hope had triumphed over fear. Uh, and, and for all the world, looking at though, this was a wonderful end of the week and everything was going brilliantly. So with the Conservatives in real trouble, do we think that Jeremy Corbyn at the end of last week is closer to being Prime Minister or further away. And I am going to argue in this next hour that actually Jeremy Corbyn has had a catastrophic week as leader of the Labour Party. Firstly, his own behaviour. How can you boycott a state banquet with Donald Trump when you've previously been to one uh, with President Xi of China? How can you stand on the hustings in Trafalgar Square, effectively calling Trump a racist and goodness knows what else, and then request to have a meeting with him, which of course got turned down? I would argue that the rise of the Liberal Democrats right across the country is a catastrophe uh, for Corbyn with, with the Remain side of his party and equally the rise of the Brexit party in the north of England, the Midlands and South Wales is also very, very damaging to him. I think the anti-Semitism uh, disaster, fiasco, has got a lot worse uh, over the course of the last 48 hours. Um, and there are questions actually about some of the tactics that Labour are now using in elections and people they're choosing to call their friends. Whatever trouble the Conservative Party may be in, this man does not look like a Prime Minister to me in any way, shape or form. So, if you're a Jeremy Corbyn supporter, if you think I've got this completely and utterly wrong, come and tell me that on 0345 6060 973. Maybe you think, actually, Nigel, you've got a point, but given the mess the Tories are in, he could still win the next election. Well, then text to 84850. And if you do agree with me, tell me, what do you think was the worst moment for Corbyn this week? And you can do that by tweeting using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And of course, Facebookers, you can comment too. Well, I can see that the phone board is already going like a Belisha beacon. Um, so let's find out. Have I got this right? Am I right to say that Corbyn is much further away from looking, sounding or being a Prime Minister at the end of this week? Mitchell is a new caller from Pontefract. Good morning, Mitchell. Good morning, Nigel. You all right, mate? I'm all right. So, Pontefract, of course, where um, you've got um, Yvette Cooper's your uh, um, member. Unfortunately. Mm. Unfortunately, yes. I mean, we're a, we're a in Pontefract, we all voted. It's a strong Brexit uh, kind of region, and she's she's the complete opposite of what I prefer in terms of a Brexit. You know, I want a Brexit to happen, and she's trying to stop it. And I really can't understand. I can't honestly, Nigel. I I feel so strongly about this. 
I, I thought we were after fresh air seeing you in Polyfret, by the way, uh, the other week. OK. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I couldn't come to see you, but uh, that's past the point. And as for Corbyn, I'm sick of... I'm sick to death of him. I've completely forged Labour now. I'm, I'm done with him. Um, but I, I do like Donald Trump, and, you know, this causes a lot of debate in my family. I bet it does. I, I really do like the guy. How, how powerful, how much of a leader I've seen. Unemployment in America, you know, being reduced. And I, I, I just think the guy's... He's complete. I love him. Genuinely. Well, well, Mitchell, we will be debating Trump uh, again, endlessly, I'm sure, yeah, well, over I'm, the course I'm, of an next but, 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 Mitchell, so, yeah. so really what you're saying, effectively, is that yeah. Yvette Cooper uh, is damaging Corbyn's chances in your constituency. Well, to me, I, I think she's damaging herself. I don't think she's helping herself in terms of how she's going about the business and, and how uh, she's trying to stop Brexit and we, 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 I just feel like she's going to completely against our thoughts and, and beliefs. But, 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 but isn't, I, isn't Mitchell, isn't, isn't this Corbyn's problem? That in a constituency like that, he's got mm -hmm. a strong Remainer MP and that's hurting yeah. Labour's chances. Yeah, I, but in other parts of the country, in other parts of the country, he sits yeah. on the fence and there are, there are Remain Labour supporters going to Berlin yeah. Dems. He's really caught, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, you could say that as well. I mean, personally, I think Tom's the complete wrong choice. I think he should resign. I think you'd see a lot more Labour voters come back to the party. But at the minute, I think it's completely going down. And as I just want to go on to Theresa May as well, how, how much I can't stand at her either. But <laughs> no, I think no, no, Mitchell, you've had your say. You've had your say. We've had Donald Trump, Theresa May, Jeremy Corbyn. Enough for now, but thank you for your call. I'm going to go to Tony in Fairham. Good morning, Tony. Yes, good morning, Nigel. Um, yes, I do really think that um, with their history, Corbyn, MacDonald, Thornbury and Abbott are going to waltz into MI6, GCHQ and MI5 and say, OK, fellas, uh, tell us, or folks, uh, ladies and gentlemen, tell us everything. Um, he and his crew are not fit for government, in my opinion. And I, I'm of the opinion that uh, the military and security infrastructure of this country will be put severely at risk should he ever get near Downing Street. Well, that's an electoral point, Tony, isn't it, that, 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 that people can judge him on. Um, do you think, do you think that actually out there, the general public think this man could be a security risk? Well, um, look at, look at uh, what his history is. Look at what their history is. Um, <clears throat> you know, they're, um, I, I believe so. Yes, I mean, he's already, well, he's anti-NATO, he's anti-EU, basically. And anti-America, and would uh, look look at how we reacted to Trump's visit. Um, he would they would strip our armed forces of everything, uh, in my opinion. And uh, you know they're they're anti-Trident. They've got no time at all to uh, look at what how they reacted to the Skripal's poisoning. Yeah. Um, so so Teddy, your view is he's just not fit to be PM. He's just not fit. He's just not. He's not, he's not fit to run a world right. stall, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Um, Fine. No, no, Tony. Good and clear. Um, I'm sure some of you out there think he's the right man for the job. Now, had of course we had this phone in two years ago at the height, Glastonbury. Oh, oh, Jeremy Corbyn. People apparently. A friend of mine owns a nightclub, so people on the dance floor on Saturday nights chanting, "Oh, oh, Jeremy Corbyn." Now, we're well past Pete Corbyn, but I know there are some Corbyn Easter supporters out there. You please call us and tell us we're wrong on 0345 606973. Let's go to Mary and Folkestone in Kent. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I think that the um, Labour Party are um, getting a bit, uh, holding um, Jeremy Corbyn at arm's length now. And I think that we will find that eventually they'll get rid of him. And I think somebody like MacDonald is trying to get himself in. He's becoming a little bit more respectable than, than he used to be. And he's not really? following Jeremy Corbyn so much. And I also think, and this is just another point of view, I really feel that come the next elections, the Labour Party with somebody else in charge, will always fight on home issues. And please, please, Nigel, get a good manifesto to fight that side of the Labour Party, because that's how they win seats. At the yeah, end of the day, yeah. people will be looking in their pockets. Well, well, Mary, um, yeah, of course, um, 
Uh, uh, I'm wrong. Par- <laughs> no, parties' platforms at, 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 at elections matter a lot, although I have, I've noticed in the last few elections that the voters believe those platforms or manifestos, well, the they word do. they use, less and less they and do, less. you see. Less yes. and less and less. Mary, thank um, you. And thank I know you you're a very Mary. young party, yeah. but you'll have time to get your big manifesto together, and it's, I wish well, you all the luck. I tell you, Mary, I'll never use the word manifesto. I think manifesto is the most abused word in the English language. Mary, thank you. Moving to Ealing to speak to Jimmy. Jimmy, good morning. Oh, hi, Nigel. Yeah, uh, good to speak to you. So it's not been a great week for Jeremy Corbyn, really, has it? Um, no, it hasn't. And, you know, I'm not just like one of those who's devoutly going to follow Corbyn, but... Um, and what I wanted to say really was I think it's it's wrong to say that he's, you know, we had a Tory minister this week, I think the health secretary saying he's just an anti-Semite. And I think it's just dangerous to kind of um, to throw that word around when it has a real meaning. And someone like Corbyn, you know, he's, he's a flawed individual, but he's definitely not a racist in my opinion. So I think it's well, wrong to... Well, OK, but he's overseeing a party where this issue crops up repeatedly. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. I mean, just think about it. You know, Lisa Forbes is the woman that won the Peterborough by-election. It turns out she's been retweeting all sorts of astonishing anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. In fact, already we've got two very senior members of the Labour Party, sitting members of Parliament, calling for her to have the whip removed before she even takes her seat. Jimmy, there's too much of it, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not fully aware of this situation, but um, there is a problem with bigotry in general in our country, and it sounds like Labour do need to vet their candidates well, a bit more. That is very well, surprising. But, I mean, we did have... Jimmy, Boris Jimmy, Jimmy, Johnson. hang on, hang, hang no, on, hang on. We had go Boris on, Johnson on. saying that Muslim women in, in burqas look like letterboxes. I, yes. mean, there's, I mean, there's a double standard when it comes to Corbyn, and if anyone who's connected with... And that is terrible that he had a... Candidate, that was kind of unbelievable. Labour need to up their game, but um, but we've been saying this, Jimmy, for the last five years. Where well, there've been reviews, yeah. you know, the Shemi Chakrabarti review. There's a thousand, a thousand yeah. accusations of anti-Semitism. It's now been lodged with the Equalities and Human Rights Commission, and and you know, even if you thought they had sorted it out, up pops Lisa Forbes, elected in Peterborough. It's almost as if, Jimmy, and, you know, you're a supporter of his, but I'm going to put this to you. I'm also a supporter of yours, Nigel. So. Well, well, thank you, but <laughs> but, but it's, it's almost as if they're turning a blind eye to this. OK, but Nigel, would can I ask you something? Would yeah. you say it's acceptable for the Tory health minister to, to call Jeremy Corbyn an anti-Semite? Do you think he's actually an anti-Semite? Um, I, mean, I know you're a sensible man, I don't think you I, 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 I think that... I, I tell you what I think. I think that Corbyn has associated over decades with people who are out-and-out anti-Semites. Whether he himself is or not is a separate question. And just chucking terms, of, uh, chucking terms of abuse, whether deserved or not, aren't helpful. But let's just look at who his friends are. Let's just look, you know, at that Palestinian martyr's ceremony uh, that he attended, where there were people actually there, you know, who tortured and murdered people at, at the Munich Olympic Games. It's not pretty, is it? It's not, but there are a lot of ugly alliances. I mean, Theresa May goes around hand in hand with, you know, the the Prince Crown of Saudi Arabia. And I mean, uh, it's not for me to comment on anti-Semitism. I'm not a Jew, and I know it is a real problem, mm. and we need to protect Jews in our society. Mm. But for one thing, Noam Chomsky, Bernie, Bernie Sanders, they all, you know, are supporters of Jeremy Corbyn. I don't think they would support an, an anti-Semite, and I think we have to be careful to to throw around that term when when well, it, it'll discredit real anti-Semitism. Well, I have I have resisted. You'll notice, Jimmy, using that word about Corbyn, but I'm afraid he's associated with too many of those people, and, it's, and it looks to be very deep in the Labour Party, and whether it's his fault or not, it's damaging his chances of being PM. Jimmy, I thank you. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show, here on LBC, it's 11.15. This is LBC. You can complain free to your lender or the financial ombudsman about missold PPI. Alternatively, if you haven't got the time or the inclination, then just get the claims guys to manage the claims process for you, with the August 29th deadline approaching times at a premium anyway. So if you can't find your paperwork or you're not even sure you have PPI, it's definitely time to make a decision and start your PPI claim before it's too late. Text ANSWER to 6677. Text ANSWER to 6677 now. The Claims Guys. If you're a frequent traveller in premium, business and first class, is your travel agent charging you too much? Switching to Bright Sun Travel's 24-7 tailor-made travel services means you could pay less on flights and hotels 
and enjoy free benefits like early and late checkout, room upgrades and hotel credits. Conditions apply. Visit brightsun.co.uk at all protected. For one weekend only, you can buy an approved used car from Volvo Select with 0% APR finance. But they also come with over 100 checks, so no need to kick the tires. A 12-month unlimited mileage warranty, which you probably never use. And the latest software upgrades, which you definitely will. Visit your local retailer this weekend and drive home an approved used Volvo with 0% APR finance. Available in used vehicles up to four years old. Participating retailers. 50% minimum deposit on minimum finance amount of £7,000. Conditional sale. Terms and conditions apply. Finance subject to status. 18 plus. Guarantee may be required. Volvo Car Financial Services. Bangers and mash. Showers and power ballots. Tea and toast. Some things just belong together. And if you own a small business, your double act is work you and life you. So at Starling Bank, we mix pleasure with business too. Manage your banking from one beautifully simple app with no monthly fees, instant spending notifications and 24-7 support. Apply in minutes today and say hello to the ultimate work-life bank balance. Just search for Starling Bank, the bank that works like you. Eligibility criteria applies. It's not just our award-winning Peugeot van range. It's your dog grooming, lift engineering, espresso making, patio building, total and utter beating heart of your business Peugeot van range. Rely on advanced new grip models to tackle tough terrain. Add your personality with stylish new asphalt models. Whatever your business, order an all-new partner, expert or boxer during our Peugeot June van event and get your first main service absolutely free. Master the impossible. On outright purchase van orders only. For full T's and C's, visit peugeot.co.uk. Have you ever bought an investment sold by Barclays, Halifax, Lloyds, Santander or any other bank or financial advisor? Investments like stocks and shares ISAs, investment bonds and certain types of pension can be risky. If you lost money with one of these investments, you could be owed thousands of pounds in compensation. Even if you no longer have the investment or the paperwork, here at Goodwin Barrett, we can still help. To start your free assessment with Goodwin Barrett, text GOOD to 60777. That's GOOD to 60777. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Well, more questions about Jeremy Corbyn emerge from Peterborough. A photograph emerges of Jeremy Corbyn with Lisa Forbes. She's just been elected as the MP, but there are calls already for her to have the whip removed because of retweeting some real anti-Semitic conspiracy nut job stuff. But standing on the other side of Jeremy Corbyn is a chap called Tariq Mahmood. Well, now he... Oh, he's lived in Peterborough some time. In fact, he was involved in serious electoral fraud in Peterborough, and he went to prison for it. And yet, there he is, standing with Jeremy Corbyn and Lisa and Lisa Forbes. And there's a photograph of him wearing a Labour rosette, actually in the counting hall. Now, uh, this raises all sorts of questions. Bigger qu- questions about Peterborough, but far bigger questions about postal voting, about some of the irregularities that we've seen over the years. Um, but I repeat the point that I made to the previous caller. He doesn't seem to choose very good friends, does he? All politicians occasionally get caught out being photographed with someone who they probably don't know, and, and, and that causes them embarrassment. But I mean, here is a man you know, who lives in central Peterborough. He's been to prison for electoral fraud, and he appears to be at the heart of Lisa Forbes' campaign. Not pretty. I think all of this is damaging Corbyn. I think he's had a... T- I personally believe he has had a rotten, rotten week. Let's go to Mark from Hitchin. Good morning, Mark. Yeah, hi, Nigel. Nigel, just first of all, I would like to talk about, uh, obviously, Jeremy and also Peter Bird, but Jeremy first. Well, he simply be, look, is looking more prime minister now if you simply look at the pool of selection of candidates who are now running for PM for the Conservative Party. I mean, we have a group of lying, wife-cheating, drug-taking individuals. So, Jeremy... <laughs> oh, like a saint, all right, all right. So, so what you're saying is the other lot are so be awful that Corbyn looks good by comparison. Well, he he, he 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 he's looking excellent. I mean, because if you just look at the candidates that they got over there, right. I mentioned three things that would normally you know remove mm. them. But but interestingly, you talk about Peterborough and the lady who won um, the the, the sea and Lisa her Forbes, auntie, yeah. yeah, and she's been doing some really bad stuff on social media. But Nigel. Did you not get rid of Catherine and also didn't you get rid of Michael, two senior members of the Brexit party for their um, 
anti-social activity on social media. Well, that's oh. really, Mark, that's really the point, isn't it? Uh, thank you for that. I think you'll notice in my political career over the last 10 years, whenever I've had people who've said deeply intolerant things, I've simply got rid of them. End of. But hang on, Nigel. Nigel end end you... of. Thank you very much indeed. No, Done no, and dusted. No, no, you and here Nigel, we you and here it. we have and here we have Nigel. Mark. Here, Nigel. Hang on, hang on, Mark. Here we have. I'll let you come back. Here we have a situation where a great big inquiry took place under Shami Chakrabarti that at best swept the issue under the carpet. There are currently a thousand complaints of anti-Semitism undealt with by the party, which is why the Equalities and Human Rights Commission have now got involved. Right, I, I'd like to come back. Thank you for letting me yeah, come back on course, that, Nigel. Right, Nigel, but but those two people, one was the leader of the uh, of your party, the other was the were, was the treasurer. They're both still listed as directors of your party, so they haven't left. You haven't got rid of them. That oh no, 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 the the directors have all changed, Mark. I can assure you of that. But anyway, but hang on, hang on. And, and that's been done. But this isn't about me. This is about Jeremy Corbyn. And what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, whether it is links with Hezbollah, Hamas, Sinn Féin IRA, electoral fraudsters, known anti-Semites, the, the, the picture I'm trying to build here, Mark, is whatever he himself is, he doesn't seem to choose the kind of friends that prime ministers normally have. But let's be honest. You, 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 let's talk about the, the reality. You're saying... Boris might be our PM. Hang on. We're talking about a drug-taking, uh, wife-cheating... Oh, hang on. Man, no, hang on. Let me finish. Let me finish. You're being unfair, a man Mark. Who put, he sneezed. No, on, he a, sneezed, a, Mark. A, Come on, you're being unfair. Right. <laughs> Whatever. A man who has put a British citizen, Mrs. Harry Radcliffe, in danger, who has been widely accepted as the worst foreign secretary this country has ever had in its history, and we want to give him the levers of power... Well, that says more about the Conservative Party and its membership than the reality. But if Mark, they had Mark, any... Mark, 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 if we accept for the premise of this conversation that I'm awful, the entire Conservative Party are dreadful, that still doesn't make Mr Corbyn look more Prime Ministerial himself. I mean, don't you think that to stand up in Trafalgar Square, to throw terms of abuse about President Trump's style of leadership, and then to ask for a meeting which was, re was rejected, didn't look very clever, Mark, did it? But then again, there you see your real friends, Nigel, will tell you the good things and the bad things. Mm -hmm. Me and you had a conversation ages ago where you were saying, you know, that Trump separating children at the border from uh, their you see, parents. You, you keep was, going was, away from the issue. I, you know, I'm fine, no, Mark. I'm no, no, I'm talking about Jeremy Corbyn. Y you tell me, forget everybody else, tell me on his own, with his own circle he's associated with, with his own behaviour this week, do you seriously say to me this Sunday he looks more Prime Ministerial than last Sunday? As I started the conversation, if you look against the candidates that he's up against, absolutely. And, and the reality is, we're not looking at, we're not really looking at a pool of selection from the Conservative Party. Let's be honest, it's more a swamper selection. If this was a business like you and me would know, Nigel, as we were both in big business, we'd be looking for the best candidates for PM, not the ones that, who would throw themselves up. And if the Conservative Party were really looking after the interests of this country, at least Theresa May had a sort of a mandate by winning a partial victory in a general election. Although she didn't get a majority, then the fact she spent a billion pounds to buy power, I'll we'll right. move that to one side. But the reality is, if, if he does become Prime Minister, and God help us if he does, he should immediately call a general election to see if the people of this country want him to be sitting and pulling those levers. All right, Mark, thank you. You've made your point. We've had a good debate. We did last time you phoned. Billy from Glasgow says, keep Corbyn and Labour out of office. They're a danger to working man's jobs and livelihoods, dividing communities and regions, a danger to our economy, a danger with our money and our resources. Keep them out of office. Well, Billy seems to have made his mind up, I suspect, before this week even began. But I stick to my point. The incident with Trump made him look bad. Turning up to celebrate this great victory at the morning after Peterborough and to be photographed, you know, as he was. And there he is next to a new MP whose senior Labour figures are demanding the whip is withdrawn from before she even takes her seat. And a convict, convicted ballot rigger. Doesn't look great to me. I mean, that's my view, but tell me I'm wrong. Alan is a new caller from Wolverhampton. 
Uh, I, yeah, sorry, Nigel. I, I uh, put my phone down for a while. Well, well, uh, well, well, it wasn't the right time to do it. But Alan, you're on. <laughs> a, you're on LBC. You tell me that Jeremy Corbyn looks stronger this week than he looked last week. Jeremy Corbyn is a complete moron. I, I posted when Theresa May uh, decided to have a general election that Labour could walk that election. The only thing that stopped him was Jeremy Corbyn. He's not a leader. He will never, ever be a prime minister in my lifetime, I hope. Um, the man has just got no charisma. He's so anti-Semitic. He's so support the terrorist. There is absolutely nothing that that bloke has got in his favour. So if Labour want to get elected to run the country, then what they need to do is dump Jeremy Corbyn. Do you think if they'd lost in Peterborough that they would have dumped Jeremy Corbyn? Well, I don't, I don't know, because he, it's been going on for so long now. There's so many... I don't know whether you want to call them leftist or what have you, but keeping in power. Why? The man has blundered so much, and but he's still the leader of the second major party mm. in the country. Mm. And it's so wrong. Why do not the party that have elected him as their leader... Why don't they kick him out? Well, I tell you what, Alan, I tell you what, virtually every time Tom Watson, a deputy leader, opens his mouth, he contradicts the leader. So I think there are some thinking that way. Alan, thank you. Going to Anna in Boreham Wood. Good morning, Anna. Hello, Nigel. Thank you for taking my call. Well, um, this really pains me to say this. And I I was following the Peterborough and looking at all the uh, developments. But in my opinion, I believe that... that, uh, We've got a situation here that the Brexit party are really sort of encroaching on Labour turf. Mm -hmm. So they're having to put in real extreme measures here because uh, Jeremy Corbyn had to win that piece. Where if he didn't, like you were saying, he's very volatile. I would be wouldn't have been surprised if he's gone sort of within a week, basically. And I think they they deliberately put in that candidate knowing that they had to win. They had to win uh, Peter Bowe. I mean, you look at the margin, 600-odd votes. Anna, I mean, Anna, it's Anna, 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 are you saying... <laughs> are you saying they had to pick an anti-Semitic candidate to get more votes yeah. in central Peterborough? I, it re- I mean, the, the politics is disgusting. and it, it, I mean, it's vile, but I can't see any other way. They deliberately did it. I mean, I really can't see to sort of promote it to a certain, uh, you know, uh, a type of vote. And it, it just pains me to, to say that. I mean, it's absolutely abhorrent, but that's the only sort of conclusion I can come up with. Because you think that the Muslim Pakistani community living in central Peterborough will, will find somebody who's strongly anti-Israel yes. a more attractive candidate. And obviously you've got the issue with around the younger vote as well, the very anti-Israel um, regarding, you know, it's not as much as, a, you know, it's, it's a combination. I mm. think they were playing to those two sides of that agenda and and i think it's absolutely disgraceful or it could could be anna or it could be just that this problem of anti-semitism is just deep within the left uh, now of politics it's got deeper and this is the thing you see this is this tactic this measure is an extreme measure and it will get worse and it's because of the brexit party so therefore so therefore it's all my fault again isn't it no it's not but you're, you're obviously doing a good job encroaching on their <laughs> on their curve, and this is what's worrying them. You well, see, and, so they're uh, having to put in yeah. drastic measures. And That's so, what I think anyway. Uh, no, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting point of view. Some will be offended by it, but it's a very interesting point of view, Anna. I thank you. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show. Here on LBC, it's now 11.30 and time for the news with Philip Chrysokos. Conservative leadership front-runner Boris Johnson claims only he can see off both Nigel Farage and Jeremy Corbyn in a general election. He's among the party's candidates setting out their ideas. Michael Gove and others says he'd replace VAT with, in his words, a lower, simpler alternative as Prime Minister. A woman has died after being found with serious injuries in Essex. Two men have been arrested on suspicion of murder after 
after officers were called to Burnham on Crouch in the early hours. One woman's died and another is in hospital after being struck by lightning while hiking near Ben Nevis in the Highlands. They were part of a group of seven people flown to hospital. LBC weather, sunshine and scattered showers, particularly across the north and the west. Lighter winds than yesterday, a high of 19 degrees. This is LBC. LBC has been working with the Get Into Teaching campaign to look at how a career in teaching can shape lives beyond the classroom. Lots of people come into teaching after two or three different careers and those kind of experiences, if you've got, for example, management experience, schools need good managers, any kind of experience in the world of work could well be applicable in the teaching world. Go to lbc.co.uk for more information on a career in teaching, to hear the full discussion and for a chance to win an iPad Air and Apple Watch with LBC. Ever noticed expensive things always seem to break down when you can least afford them? So if your boiler is on the blink, the last thing you want is to fork out for expensive repairs or a replacement. Rated 5-star excellent on Trustpilot, LS1 Boiler Installation could supply and fit a brand new Worcester Bosch boiler with free breakdown cover and a 10-year guarantee, all with zero deposit and low monthly interest-free payment options. For an instant quote, go to ls1boilerinstallation.co.uk. Conditions apply. Make the perfume shop your one-stop shop for Father's Day. You'll find top deals to wow dad, like a 200ml Boss Bottle United for £42.99. That's over 50% off the RIP of £87. Shopping online? Click and collect to store in 30 minutes. Offer ends 16th of June 2019 while stocks last. T's and C's apply. Visit theperfumeshop.com. Get Vodafone's double data deal this summer. We're giving away double data on all pay monthly smartphones. Yes, all pay monthly smartphones. Now a huge 30 gig for the price of 15, starting at only £30 a month. Double the selfie sharing, double the playlist pumping and double the maps mapping. To get double data, go online or in-store today. The future's exciting. Ready? Vodafone. Terms and details at vodafone.co.uk slash summer ends 9th of July. It's not just our award-winning Peugeot van range. It's your dog grooming, lift engineering, espresso making, patio building, total and utter beating heart of your business Peugeot van range. Rely on advanced new grip models to tackle tough terrain. Add your personality with stylish new asphalt models. Whatever your business, order an all-new partner, expert or boxer during our Peugeot June van event and get your first main service absolutely free. Master the impossible. On outright purchase, van orders only. For full T's and C's, visit peugeot.co.uk. Sharing credit card details on scraps of loose paper. Finding battered receipts in the wash. Stressing out your accountant. Uh. Expense management doesn't have to be stuck in the dark ages. Say hello to Soldo. Company cards that do your expenses for you. Give your team prepaid cards to simply spend, snap the receipt, and that's that. Spend smarter. See the light at soldo.com. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. The interesting statistic of the week is this. When the general election was contested in 2017, in the Peterborough constituency, the Labour and Conservative parties between them got 95% of the vote. On Thursday, the Labour and Conservative parties between them got 52% percent of the vote. That is a most extraordinary, dramatic shift. Is it a short-term thing? Is it part of longer-term change? Well, nobody yet knows the answer to that. And yes, of course, Labour did win that seat with just over 30 percent of the vote. Uh, But any victory celebrations for Jeremy Corbyn went sour with calls very quickly for Lisa Forbes, the the successful candidate, to have the whip removed for anti-Semitism. I think he's had a rotten week. Don is a new caller to me from Harrow. Good morning to you. Yeah, hi. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn's had an awesome week. Oh, right. They they stopped taking bets on the Brexit party winning Peterborough. They literally wrote them off. They wrote them off in 2017, and yet they win again. The um, best way to get... Well, I mean, well, 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 well OK, Don. Uh, um, on the bookmaker, on the bookmaker's odds, well, uh, listen, uh, time and again we see the prices of elections that are completely wrong. We saw it with Brexit, we saw it with Trump, we saw it in Peterborough. There was also, Don, I think a big surprise to people that in a generally low turnout election, 
that the postal vote turnout was 70 percent and there's a there are some huge issues around that but but don i'm going to put this to you all right so all right so corbyn's a winner but look at look at his european election performance I mean, the European elections were a complete joke. I mean, you, you've literally, the last time UKIP won that, then we had an election a couple of years later and they got no MPs. The European election has always been a protest vote. You can't really take anything from it because time and time again, people just go out, they vote 30% turn up, they just vote for anyone. And then when the election comes up, they vote for someone else completely different. It's not an indication of anything. But if you want to beat Jeremy Corbyn, it's very simple. Beat his policies. When you go on the, on the doorstep and you say to someone, would you like your children to have massive student fee debt? They'll say no. That's, if you say, do you want your mum sitting in her pee and her poo because you can't get social care? They'll say no. And that's why they vote Jeremy Corbyn. Right. And at this moment, he's unbeatable. Could you? Well, well, Don, let me just put this to you. He's lost every national election that he's led Labour into. Every single one. Local elections, European elections, general elections. He's lost every single time. And we, you talk about Corbyn's policies. On the defining issue of the day, which is Brexit, it dominates everything. Can you tell me, Don, what his policy on Brexit is, please? His, his policy is mm. to get better hospitals, better schools. Ah, but what about Brexit? Tuition fees. Brexit, you can't get egg out of a cake. You know, that's Brexit. Right. Oh, f- right. So, so I'm a Labour voter. We, I'm a Labour yeah. voter, and on the issue that the history books will say dominated these years, the answer is you can't get egg out of a cake. Yeah. The the answer is we've got better schools, better hospitals, and Brexit just disappeared as as an issue as we got better schools, better hospitals, and better social care. You had a good try, Nigel, and you wanted don't, to get out of Europe. I, you can't I, get egg out of a cake. I think you're missing the point here that actually, actually, Brexit is dominating what's happening. That's why the Liberal Democrats have gone from being moribund to tearing chunks out of the Labour Party. Peterborough voted 60% Brexit. Yeah? Yeah. Peterborough voted for what is essentially a Remain party. When you say to the guys on the doorstep, do you want better schools, better hospitals, zero Uh. tuition fees... Brexit will disappear. And, and do you want an anti-Semitic member of Parliament? How about that? If I if I eat a leaf of lettuce, it doesn't make me a vegan. If I tweet two posts about that could be seen as anti-Semitic, doesn't make me anti-Semitic. Do you think it's the, a good try, Nigel? Do you, do you, know, do you, you, do you think Corbyn's it, Labour Party? Do you think Corbyn's Labour Party has a problem with anti-Semitism or not? Yeah, they do have a problem with anti-Semitism. They spend too much time talking about it. Ah, we need better schools, better hospitals. Right, OK, ignore and, that. And better social yes, care. yeah, the hell with what the Jews yeah. think. The fact they're all deeply offended and scared in many cases doesn't matter. Better schools, better hospitals, yeah? I'm saying to you that try being a Muslim wearing a hijab. Yeah. You'll see what racism is. Try oh, being a right. black man being stopped all the time for no apparent reason by the police. Mm. Okay. The people on the street know what is important and they can they can say, this is more important than that. I need better schools, I need better hospitals, I need more police. So you're you, saying you that anti-Semitism is being... Uh, uh, compared to other problems that exist already in society, anti-Semitism is getting too much airtime, yeah? No, no I'm, I'm saying that Jewish people are saying that. That it's being used as a tool, uh, you know, and it's really... Um, you know, there isn't one Jewish community who all think the same thing. There are Jewish people who say, yes, you know, Jeremy Corbyn is anti-Semitic, and there are Jewish people who say he's the best thing since sliced bread. I think you're missing a very major change, and I I think the situation in Europe is actually far worse than it is here. I'll, I'll just relay this to you, you know, compared to 20 years ago when I first went to Strasbourg, there's a massive change. I now see school children, you know, young school children going into school in the Jewish part of Strasbourg and they've got soldiers and armed police officers accompanying these kids every single day, so fearful are they of anti-Semitic attack. Nothing to do with Jeremy Corbyn. You know, that's a different country. There is a trend, you know? there is a trend, there is growing anti-Semitism across Europe and it's, 
I'm afraid, a massive problem for Labour. All right, Don, thank you. You're a big Corbyn supporter, and Don believing Corbyn has got the right answers to the questions. I'd still repeat the point that Brexit, whether you want it or not, is the defining political issue of the day. Richard is a new caller from Ashford. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Nigel. Um, I'm a Brexiteer, uh-huh. um, and I also believe and want and have wanted for years proportional representation. Uh-huh. Now, I agree with everything you've been saying about Jeremy Corbyn, but uh-huh. I actually think he will be very happy with the Peter Barr by-election result because it split the Tory party vote. And I think he will be saying to, quietly saying to his team, more of the same, please, more of the same, please. Let's make absolutely sure that the Tories don't get their Brexit by the 31st of October until such time as we can have a general election. Then yeah. he will be hoping that the Brexit party will split the Tories in two. Um, well, sorry, it will split the Tory party up. And you'll, you'll, you'll have many MPs in the Houses of Parliament, but nobody will have a majority. So I might eventually get my wish and get proportional representation but I've got a bad feeling in those circumstances I still wouldn't get my Brexit. Yeah, Richard, look, I take your point that that, that, that if, if Corbyn sees the Conservative vote split, that may make him closer to being Prime Minister, although, of course, he's being hurt, he's being hurt by the Liberal Democrats and the Brexit Party as well. Um, but my yeah. question was, my question to, to debate was whether he looked like a prime minister and, and 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 even if even if you're right even if labor can win more seats now because the tory vote split which and I, and I don't think it's as simple as that but even if it was you know does he actually look has his behavior this week are the people he associates with does he look like a prime minister richard can you imagine him can you imagine him you know getting off an airplane uh, yeah. anywhere in the world, walking down the steps and looking like our leader. I to- well, I totally agree. I-, I-, I think to most people, the answer is no. But clearly to the core of the Labour membership, the answer is yes. And quite honestly, once and if Labour could find themselves in power, they could easily change their leader. You know, we saw that years ago. I mean, I'm getting on a bit. Well, we, a, we saw it years ago London. when Ken Livingstone was the leader of the GLC. Do you remember? Well, is it, was Someone it, else Andy, led the Labour Party. Andy McIntosh got elected as leader of Labour. He was going and to they take, immediately that's changed right. the leader. And there was a coup, and and yeah. and in a, a, a political coup, and in came uh, in came Ken Livingstone. No, no, that is absolutely true. Richard, thank you for your call and your thoughts. Interesting. June is calling from Donegal in Ireland. Good morning, June. Good morning. I'm on holiday here. I live in Hyde Park. Um, okay. I just would like to uh, say that I think Jeremy Corbyn is an absolute disgrace. Do you? Why is that? Well, just um, he never keeps his promises that he makes in the campaigns, promises all sorts of things, and uh, they just get forgotten. And the fact that a Labour leader and Labour members, prominent Labour members, actually led the protest march on about D-Day and about the veterans and about World War, whoa, 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 which whoa, whoa, was whoa, whoa, about whoa. everything. H- hang on, hang on, hang on. The protest this week was about Trump. It wasn't about D-Day. No, it, they made it about Trump, yeah. But what was Trump here to represent? Well, he was here. Well, no, June, to, to be fair, no, June, to be fair, he, of course, was here for the ceremony in Portsmouth. And, of course, the big American event um, at Colville Sumer, just behind o- Omaha Beach. But he was also here for a state visit, wasn't he? Well, I think that was secondary. Okay, no. I do think the, 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 um, the celebrations and uh, w- was, was the major reason you, he was here. And when Corbyn, despite having said those things about him, requested a meeting with Trump, was Trump right Should to say he? no to him? Of course. That is why Corbyn is so two-faced. You can't trust him on anything. I can't imagine Corbyn as Prime Minister and Trump, the two senior countries no. in countries in NATO, sitting down together to Can discuss those things. Can you imagine the Labour Party as it stands now, being in control of the UK? We would end up having Libyan... Um, oh, I shouldn't be speaking out of turn, but Corbyn... 
supports the IRA who flies the Libyan and Palestinian flags. He's an absolute traitor well, to he, the UK. Well, I, I'm not going to join you in that, June, but I'm going to say he doesn't choose his friends very well. That's my view. June, enjoy your holiday in lovely Donegal. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It is now 11.46. This is LBC. Are you about to put your audit out to tender? How will you decide which accountants to select? Whether you decide to spend more or less, go bigger or perhaps smaller, what you really need to do is choose the one best suited to your company, in which case you should arrange a free meeting with Barnes Rofe. We know that every client has different needs because we spend the time to get to know them personally. Contact us at barnesrofe.com. Barnes Rofe, clever accountants for business. It's not just our award-winning Peugeot van range. It's your dog grooming, lift engineering, espresso making, patio building, total and utter beating heart of your business Peugeot van range. Rely on advanced new grip models to tackle tough terrain. Add your personality with stylish new asphalt models. Whatever your business, order an all-new partner, expert or boxer during our Peugeot June van event and get your first main service absolutely free. Master the impossible. On outright purchase, van orders only. For full T's and C's, visit peugeot.co.uk. So, what's everyone got for lunch, then? Just a sandwich. Yeah, I've got the same boring sandwiches yesterday. Oh, what have you got? Ah, a refreshingly smooth Costa iced latte, a tasty mozzarella and sun-dried tomato pasta salad, and a bag of fancy hand-cooked crisps. Why have the same thing every day? Pop into Costa Coffee for lunch and pick up your favourite hot or iced coffee with our delicious lunch deal, just £4.95. Costa's lunch deal available between 11 and 2. Visit costa.co.uk for full terms and participating stores. Have you ever bought an investment sold by Barclays, Halifax, Lloyds, Santander or any other bank or financial advisor? Investments like stocks and shares ISAs, investment bonds and certain types of pension can be risky. If you lost money with one of these investments, you could be owed thousands of pounds in compensation. Even if you no longer have the investment or the paperwork, here at Goodwin Barrett, we can still help. To start your free assessment with Goodwin Barrett, Text GOOD to 60777. That's GOOD to 60777. Get Vodafone's Double Data deal this summer. We're giving away double data on all pay monthly smartphones. Yes, all pay monthly smartphones. Now a huge 30 gig for the price of 15, starting at only £30 a month. Double the selfie sharing, double the playlist pumping and double the maps mapping. To get double data, go online or in-store today. The future's exciting. Ready? Vodafone. Terms and details at vodafone.co.uk slash summer ends 9th of July. You can complain free to your lender or the financial ombudsman about missold PPI. Alternatively, if you haven't got the time or the inclination, then just get the claims guys to manage the claims process for you, with the August 29th deadline approaching times at a premium anyway. So if you can't find your paperwork or you're not even sure you have PPI, it's definitely time to make a decision and start your PPI claim before it's too late. Text ANSWER to 6677. Text ANSWER to 6677 now. The Claims Guys. Little Red Riding Hood has been trying to sell her grandma's home for some time now, but the estate agent's shiny, sharp teeth have left her with sweat on her brow. Trust me, darling, I just want what's best for you, hence the added fees. <laughs> However, she spoke to the friendly team at Property Rescue, who cut out the middleman and guaranteed a sale in as little as 48 hours with no fees whatsoever. Fast forward to living happily ever after. Visit propertyrescue.co.uk. Property Rescue. Fast forward to sold. This is LBC, The Nigel Farage Show. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Well, to me, Jeremy Corbyn looks less like a Prime Minister this time, this week, than he did last week, even though the party clung on to the seat of Peterborough. I just think his performance, his behaviour during the Trump visit, I think his links and associations with ballot riggers, anti-Semites, he really doesn't seem to choose his friends very carefully. What does Bill in Manchester think? Bill, good morning. Hiya. I just think the premise of this uh, debate mm-hmm. is a bit it's a bit off-centre. I think most people in this country would agree that he is unprime ministerial, almost unelectable. But the, a lot of those same people are, would, would actually vote Labour themselves because there's more to voting Labour than just who the leader is. And it's, 
<sighs> not a, we're not a presidential system. And but, I think but, but people... Bill, we are, aren't we? I mean, haven't we gone in the direction where actually... When we vote in general elections, it's whether we like the leader or don't like the other leader. Often we vote for negative reasons because we think the one we're going to vote for is not as bad as the other. Haven't we become more presidential over the last few uh, years? Absolutely, we've become more so. But not I don't think enough to swing an election. And I think the nuances of what we're discussing about the Trump visit or his behaviour about this ah. or behaviour about that, ah. I don't think that would actually go, you know... All right, Bill, I'm, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you very strongly. Because I think how someone looks, how we imagine that person walking down the steps of an aeroplane, whether it's in China or America or Moscow or wherever it may be, I actually think we want someone who looks like a leader. Yes, true. But the alternatives for a lot of people is unthinkable. A lot of people could, would never vote Tory. A lot of people, tribally, thinking about their own finances, they're thinking about very basic bread and butter issues. I wish people thought more about foreign policy, about what they would look like in, on the international stage. But time and again in elections in this country, and again, we might be moving away from this, but I don't think the, the move has been significant enough that it's going to swing an election yet. It might do in the future. I, I think people ultimately think about themselves when they're, vote, when they're voting. And I'm from the north, from Manchester, and... I speak to people all the time about this, mm, and, mm. and they all go on about how terrible Corbyn is. But yet, these all the same people who say, well, I can't vote for the Tories, Labour have the policies that are best going to help me, my family, this, that, the other, and they just don't seem to care about foreign policy. And that's been consistent. The, the British public have not cared about foreign policy in an election for, you know, 30 years. Well, that, de that, that depends how you view Brexit, I suppose, doesn't it, really? But uh, whether that's foreign policy or trade policy or whatever it may be. Bill, uh, you know, uh, clearly people will go on voting for Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party if they think he's going to do the best job in schools, hospitals, student loans, whatever it may be. Uh, I still think uh, that he has appeared this week to be petulant. Uh, he, he, he just... The, 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 Bill, he doesn't look like a Prime Minister, but hey, you may no. be right, you may be right, they may well go on voting. Thank you very much indeed. I'm going to go to Romford to speak to Nina, who's a new caller. Good morning, Nina. Good morning, Nigel. You made my day, sir. I love your show. Well, very good. Well, thank you. Well, you're on it now, so... No, I, I, I have my alarm clock set to make sure I don't miss it. Right, very good. <laughs> I'm absolutely delighted to speak to you, sir. Now, I, I have an observation to make. Uh -huh. You asked about Mr. Corbyn. Uh -huh. There is a word in the English dictionary which is not well known, and the name is cacocracy. Nice. Gosh. Definition. You've got, you, you've, you've got me there, Nina. I've got to tell you. I mean, I know this is not called my bluff, but you've got me there, right? No, no, no. This Cacocracy. Is, is Go on. Go you on. Can, Go on. I'm sure your staff checked that before they put me through to you. Okay. Cacocracy stands for a country being run by citizens who are least suitable, mm -hmm. least competent, mm -hmm. most unscrupulous. <laughs> Every time I see Mr. Corbyn, which luckily is not often, <laughs> this word comes to my mind. But are cacocracies possible? I mean, if he is the least suitable and looks the least suitable, could it ever actually happen, Nina? Well, I sincerely hope not, sir. <laughs> right, well, there's a lot of people. Although, although Nina, I get people, uh, I've had people in the, the course of the last hour who say to me, look at the other lot, the Tories are all rule breakers, drug takers, dishonest, don't keep their promises, and compared to them, they think Corbyn looks quite good. I'm sorry, but I don't agree. OK, well, there we are. That's what LBC's for, and thank you for calling in. Thank you, and, and your kind words about the show. I'm going to South Wales, to Bridge End, to speak to Sean. Good morning. Good morning, Nigel. I've been waiting to speak to you for a long time. Well, I'm very pleased you finally have. Good morning. Big so. So, now, they're very interesting because, of course, South Wales, you know, 
the last hundred years and more, in fact, even back to 1900 with Keir Hardy winning that seat in Merthyr Tydfil. I mean, you, you are the Labour heartland, Sian. No, no, not me. <laughs> well, maybe no. not you, but, but your area yeah. uh, has been the Labour heartlands, and yet, been, yeah. and yet the Labour vote's beginning to hemorrhage, I, I, I sense, in, in South Wales. That is true. You, you, I, I know you asked the question, would yeah. you... Does he look uh, to yes. be a prime minister? Yes. And I think, no, I think he, he, him coming off a plane would look like um, Albert Steptoe coming off the plane. Albert you know, um, I just don't think he looks... Uh, Is he a bit shabby, Sean? Yes. I could I could give him a... Go- <laughs> well, I just said Albert Steptoe. Yeah, he t- <laughs> so... Well, well, but then again, maybe a makeover. You know, yeah. a makeover, and he could suddenly appear to and be all trendy and... Like Trump says what he says, and he means what he says. And when Jeremy Corbyn, you don't, I don't know, he just hasn't got it. He hasn't got that, um, what can I say, charisma. He hasn't got that determination. He just hasn't got what we, what we okay. need. We, he's okay. not, he hasn't got the leader. And That's tell me something, Sean. Does yes. Trump yes. Look, look like a US president? Yes, okay. definitely. Um, actually, when I saw him, because I watched um, everything on television and, you know, standing next to Prince Charles, who I like very much, but. You know, he looked, you could see, good. he could be king then. If he was in this country, I thought Donald Trump could be the next. If he was uh, the Queen's son, you know, he could, he's got that about him. Okay. I don't know um, very much so than I've seen of most presidents. He's, yeah, he I has, mean, definitely. He certainly, he certainly got the confidence. A lot, yeah. a lot of people can't stand him, but he's got the confidence. Sean, thank yeah. you for your call. I've got time for one last caller this morning, and that is Robert from Norwich. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Nigel. We need to look very closely at the people around Corbyn. Lisa Forbes is a Unite Trade Union official. Len McCluskey bankrolls a lot of the Labour Party. He had a, fu- uh, a son with uh, Jenny Formby, promoted her within Unite. She now is the General Secretary of Labour. Keir Kira Murphy uh, is Jeremy Corbyn's gatekeeper and allegedly a close friend of McCluskey. And it's these people that have been blocking the complaints about anti-Semitism, and that's what's setting the, the tone within the Labour Party. Now, Corbyn's like me. He's got a small number of advisors or people around him that are sort of, I think, manipulating him. But the other thing, too, when you look at the Labour Party, it's like reading Animal Farm. And I would characterise Corbyn as Snowball and McDonald <laughs> as Napoleon. And I wouldn't be surprised if Napoleon, should Corbyn get elected as PM, uh, tries to take over. And well, that actually be more dangerous than Corbyn. Well, that's a very, very nice little story, with whether people agree or not, to finish uh, this week up on Robert. Thank you. And, well, all the ups and downs of the week, the highlight, I think, was the extraordinary... Uh, dignity uh, that we saw on the beaches of Normandy from British, Canadian and American veterans this week and the number of people I know who said to me that they watched those scenes and they actually felt emotional watching them so powerful were the images so that's the that's the high point I think of the week I will be back here at six o'clock tomorrow at three this afternoon it's Ian Payne but up next it's Majid Nawaz Thanks, Nigel. According to the head of the world's first centre for psychedelic research, hallucinating, uh, hallucination-inducing drugs like magic mushrooms could be about to break Big Pharma's stranglehold on the hugely lucrative market for antidepressants. Do we need to fundamentally review our cultural bias against drugs? Before that, Jeremy Corbyn has said Labour's new MP, Lisa Forbes, is not a racist in any way, as he dismissed calls for her to be suspended. What happened to Labour's zero tolerance for racism? But first, Boris Johnson today sets out his stall to be Prime Minister. 